you see any of those baggy pants south top of the hills it was huge wind if you know it was a violin to be or answer the telephone and if anyone asked the sailboat and it please. could it was James for it it is like that is it could Mr. Bojangles get Mr. Bojangles the railroad for these workers and I reach you it could be one were the scarf of wear in black and white it is it could this Frankie is about it could be one Frankie the things on the table it could be this one could be counting up very fresh if you know it was a violin to be answer clean. the telephone it could be one a balloon it it all these were days my friends and these are the days it my friends it is like that could get mr bojangles the railroad mr bojangles for these workers mr bojangles and i reach you it could get for it is one word it could be this is about the things on the table a balloon it could be this one could be counting up this one has Frankie. been being very american it could be very it. fresh and it. clean it, it could is like that be those ways i reach you one will it get some wind for the sailboat one. and it could get it 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 for is like that it is it it could get a wrench for these you. workers and the scarf of wear in black and white if you see it any of those baggy pants all these are the days my chuck the hills and these are the days one my friends the day with its cares and perplexities is ended and the night is now upon us the night should be a time of peace and tranquility a time to relax and be calm We have need of a soothing story to banish the disturbing thoughts of the day, set that set at rest our troubled minds and put at ease our ruffled spirits. And what sort of story shall we hear? Ah, it will be a familiar story. A story that is so very, very old, and yet it is so new. It is the old, old story of love. Two lovers sat on a park bench with their bodies touching each other, holding hands in the moonlight. There was silence between them. So profound was their love for each other, they needed no words to express it. And so they sat in silence on the park bench with their bodies touching and holding hands in the moonlight. Finally, she spoke. Do you love me, John? She asked. You know I love you, darling, he replied. 
I love you more than tongue can tell. You are the light of my life, my sun, moon, and stars. You are my everything. Without you, I have no reason for being. Again, there was silence as the two lovers sat on the park bench, their bodies touching, holding hands in the moonlight. Once more, she spoke. How much do you love me, John? She asked. He answered, How much do I love you? Count the stars in the sky. Measure the waters of the oceans with a teaspoon. Number the grains of sand on the seashore. Impossible, you say? Yes, and it is just as impossible for me to say how much I love you. My love for you is higher than the heavens, deeper than Hades, and broader than the earth. It has no limits, no bounds. Everything must have an ending except my love for you. There was more silence as the two lovers sat on the park bench, their bodies touching, holding hands in the moonlight. Once more, her voice was heard. Kiss me, John. And leaning over, he pressed his lips warmly to hers in fervent osculation.